Well, as we found out, there is no uh, kill screen in 2 million now. So, uh, if you watch the episode of Chuck, and it was all make-believe. So, hey, before I get started, let's just make it out really easy. Has anybody got any questions so we can get that out of the way at first, huh? Seeing I know half the crowd here. <laughs> I'll show you later. <laughs> I could just get straight into playing, but uh, that'd be a little bit boring. Uh, there's no questions whatsoever from the audience, right? Oh, you guys are awesome. Great. <laughs> Yes, sir. Are you going to do another uh, marathon in town? Yeah. Are there any other questions? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about this decade. It's usually a couple of years in between my attempts. I don't know if there's a, not that many questions. You pretty much solved the, the issue that, that stopped you in the movie, right? Who let Ken House in here? <laughs> I'm sorry, I man. I couldn't hear the question again. The, the, the issue that kept killing off your games, right. you solved that now, right? Uh, yeah, I have solved that. Uh, a, is anybody curious to hear the answer? Uh, from, yeah, I bet. <laughs> it took three grueling years of my life and heartache and uh, pain and sorrow uh, to figure out the answer to this, but um, even though I had attempted... Uh, Even though I had, you know, gone many, many attempts, staying up overnight and, uh, and trying it, I guess most of you realize the, the heartache and, you know, what happened and the game resets, which uh, supposedly is what happened to all those gamers before me on that list of nine. Now, I guess a lot of you know I'm in 10th place of all time, and I'm the only active one in that list attempting to bump himself up that list. Um, it was explained to me long after I, I did the uh, attempt again in March of 2008. Now, that's all long after the film. That's when I finally took my score from 29 million to 45 million and I played a game over 24 hours. It was after figuring out the, not so much the secret, but what you gotta do to get around it. And it's not hardware. I know at the beginning of the film, for those of you who have seen the film, we did have a board that had hardware issues. Later on, once I got another board in there, people just assumed with the, fl with the flow of the movie and you know, they just believed that I was so good at it that how could this happen? It must be hardware with the board. I didn't believe that. I went after the idea that it's software, and as it turned out, it was software. Even though I thought that I had figured out how to uh, get around the 250, uh, 56 extra cities in storage, no, I hadn't figured it out. Nobody had figured it out to where they could put it in print and say, here, this is how you do it, this is the problem, this is, this is the work around it. And uh, really, the, the work around it is during uh, one of the special zero times boards, uh, board 255 and board 256 are both worth, instead of six times value, they're worth 256 times value. So, seeing how there isn't a digital display letting me know how many cities I have in storage, you know, which could, could take care of this problem 29 years ago, um, I always thought that I had fewer cities than I did, and when I got to these zero times boards and I play them out, that would always end it. Most of you know from chatting with me or seeing the film that usually it's after board 255 or board 256 when the game resets and it's over with. All right. A way around this is you can't play board 256. It starts up like you're about to play it, but then it gives you 256 times all six cities and all 30 missiles. But board 255, one board before that, you do have the option not to play it. So. At times when I felt like I had too many cities in storage, I wouldn't even play the 255th board. It would give me you know, 60 grand, 70, 80 grand, whatever, that's only seven cities. It's not 79, 80, 100 cities because I rocked out, got every possible point and saved six cities. It's just gonna put you over the, the hump of the 256 cities in storage. Finally, I figured it out and in March of 08, I did it. And in March of 08, I became the first player to have two classic titles go over a day, both on videotape. Now, from what I've heard, there's one confirmed that a guy has got two classic titles go over a day, neither on video, and there's another guy unconfirmed who's got two classic titles go over a day. But as far as being able to prove it, I'm the first. So that's really the only thing I can say about myself being number one. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Never has there been so much uh, hype and like a film being made and all this stuff over a guy who's got 10th place in one game and 15th in another. whoop de doo you know, I'm sitting in a room with guys who have got ones. You know, I, I, I want to be first place. Look at Ken House right here. Just got the world record on Dig Dug. Ken House, my man. John McAllister just got number one on Asteroids Deluxe. Oh my God. He beat the world record by 18 and a half times what it was for 20 years. 
unbelievable, unbelievable. Oh. Expect more out of that man. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I can't really say, say that about myself. Um, let's have a look. Uh, any other questions before I get started playing a game here at all? Any... Rocking, you guys are great. Play back. <laughs> cross dressed and backwards. I've seen him play cross dressed actually. <laughs> Wow, that's, that's kind of loud. Um, Satellites come across on, the on this next board. The secret to get three instead of two? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very few people know that, John McAllister. Look at you, man. All right, we'll try to do that here. All right, no pressure. Now, um, tournament mode and marathon mode. Those are the two mo modes that they uh, score missile command in. What I, I guess, became known for is uh, playing marathon mode. A day, two days, three days, whatever it takes. Marathon mode, which is not as insane. Am I going to do it here, John, or not? I don't think so. No. You're right. Anticlimactic. All right. Tournament mode is where you start with the six cities, and that's all you can get for the entire game. That's tournament mode. That way, during these conventions, things like this, someone can go for a score, go for a record. Now, if you really want to be impressed, fly to England and see Tony Temple. But your backup plan is watching Roy Schill sitting right over there, who dominates me in uh, tournament mode missile command. Hey, Roy, give it up, buddy. What's up? All right. Now, for... <clears throat> Resurgence with classic video. That was something I was going to want to get into today. Thank goodness for Twin Galaxies. Uh, most of you have seen the movie know that uh, it was early 2003. Somebody had turned me on to uh, Twin Galaxies' website explaining to me what they were doing. And I said, I, I, I want to be on those lists. I want to be in that book. And by late 2003, I had done the uh, Asteroids attempt, which was definitely going to get me in the book. Uh, you know, I guess some of you have found out that sometimes it takes weeks or months, especially if someone has to sit and watch, you know, nine of your tapes go by of the same game. It's going to be a long time before the score finally gets, you know, official and recognized. And I learned early on not to hype the event ahead of time. We can hype the event when it's over. We can let them watch the tape, give the thumbs up, and then it's the big, the big hoopla. Because what I found... As soon as you say I'm going for a world record on something and people start hyping it up, the game breaks down within an hour. Now, for the longest time, I was uh, third, right behind Roy and uh, Tony Temple, um, for Missile Command Tournament Mode. I really don't care about tournament mode that much as, as I do uh, marathon mode, or at least I haven't so far. Uh, yeah, I'm concentrating. The resurgence thing, though, by me doing it, by there being, you know, this controversy with Roy, by this new guy, Tony Temple, coming out of the woodwork in 2006. Man, in 2008 alone, I got knocked from third to fifth um, on the tournament settings. I thought that, I thought that could have sat for years and, year, you know, you never know. But now this resurgence. Thank goodness for Twin Galaxies. And, and CAG. Are there any questions yet? Can you guys see the blue screen up there okay? Good. Maybe I should look up there. Really, I'd like to ask a question. Wow. This, this speaker is very loud up here. I was wondering where John McAllister got the uh, idea all of a sudden to start doing this out of the blue, be one of these guys to come out of the woodwork and start setting these unbelievable scores. Did the announcement of anything I did over the last few years motivate you at all to do any of that? Did it really? I fantasized that. John approached me with an idea today that I think he mentioned in the past, and that was, how about someday we both do an Asteroids Marathon attempt together at the same time? That increases the chances of something fabulous finally happening, because either I blow up the board, or, or, or 
right below the board. Asteroids, for some reason, the power boards don't seem to handle me playing. I don't know if it's because the, uh, you know, power board was just old, or if there was an issue with power in the building, or what the deal is. But uh, I would like to talk about doing that at some point. That sounds like a great idea. Let's have a look. Oh, the um, number one world record holder for a video game named Kicker is in the audience. Please give it up for Chris Mansfield. Woo, Chris! Take a bow, my man. Right on. Are there any questions? If you guys get sick of this, let me know. I'll stop playing this. But your other option is to stand and stare and look at me, so... I'm sorry? Are there different styles of like this? I've noticed from uh, watching DVDs of Roy play that, uh, yes, there most definitely is. You know, the majority of time that I've played, it isn't with the tournament thing in mind. You know, uh, sure, I can't uh, go a million, you know, a million boards without losing a city like Roy, but uh, I can go long enough if I'm only getting 10,000. If I'm getting a city every 10,000, no problem. Um, so yeah, there's different playing styles from me watching him on the DVD. One thing I notice is that when Roy shoots the diamonds, they're much farther up the screen than when I shoot. I'm used to a lot of basement shots, things like that. You know, worrying about the, uh, worrying about the diamond doing something weird. And I guess that does have me worried, but Roy, I guess, was for forced to learn how to do this. Uh, because, you know, he only gets six cities. I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Um, he'll be f way farther up the screen picking off diamonds up here when I'm picking off diamonds down here. Um, and also, I noticed that Roy is way more accurate with uh, using his center base, uh, his side bases. Uh, if you guys notice this or not, but you may notice that there's a difference in the speed of the shots coming out of the center and the shots coming out of uh, the sides. It's almost half as slow. So uh, you get used to shooting everything with the center, then all of a sudden you start using the side. The line is going to go much slower at your target. Well, Roy seems to have that timing down between these a whole lot better than I do. But then again, playing tournament mode, he'd be forced to be better at that. A lot of people ask, uh, <clears throat> is there a pattern to the lines that you can figure out? No, it's random. It helps to have good peripheral. You gotta be able to see what's going on. And you have to master the technique of shooting diamonds. That's, that's something a lot of people just cannot get over. Uh, I remember hearing um, uh, David Thoreau, the guy who programmed the game, speak about the, uh, the diamonds were one of the hardest things for them to program. They could program it to where the diamonds were unbelievably rough, and they could program it where the diamonds were unbelievably easy. And uh, they said to get that mix down just right was very difficult. I'm sorry? Sure, at the beginning each time you'll notice. You pick a left, you pick a right, you get lucky. You want to hit that ship coming out. Those ships can uh, lay lines down on you lower than the lines coming out from up top. That's dangerous. And sometimes it's worth the extra shot just to ensure. So here's some Roy play, shooting them way up here. And doing it, unlike me. Well, you know, it's all whatever you get used to. Ah, oh, the colors have just rotated through. You'll notice that it went from black, different sections of black and yellow, black and red, then the blue, then the whites, then the purples, the yellows, the oranges, the greens, and all that. I prefer the blackboards. You can see everything much better. I think it's 26, so it's 13 different setups because each one's times two. I think 20 or 26. I should really know that. Um, well, during my uh, during the marathon attempts, I, I I do know the answer to that. It's just right now it escapes me. A lot of people argue over how many cities you get at the bonus at 810,000. I don't know how many of you know of that. I'm sure some of you know about that, but uh, 
forever it was just said that it's 200 cities. That's what everybody would say. And then one day I got to doing the math on it, figured out it was 147. What you can do is get to 810,000, purposely let it go from there. When the game ends, you can figure out by the uh, 1,800 points you get every screen, because it only takes three of your six cities every time the board goes through. So even if you walk away from the game, you start it up, you have six cities, the game's going to play two boards. I can figure that out because that's really basic math. Three times two is six. I'm sorry, when you guys are speaking, this speaker's so loud. Why missile command? Oh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. I got two buddies of mine uh, that, uh, as I was growing up, they were unbelievable. They were naturals. They were more like a lot of the people that I seem to associate with now. My, uh, my gaming crowd, unlike myself. They, uh, they're naturals, they're really good. They taught me how to do it uh, marathon style with asteroids first and then missile command later. Now these guys took to it real quick, you know, early, early on with the gaming, uh, with these games coming out. For me, it took a little bit longer. The reason um, I like it when people say, hey, how come, how come Missile Command, how come Asteroids? Why do you play those games for days and not some other game? Well, I seem to instill in people the belief that I could probably do that with a whole lot of games, and the truth is, I can only do it with Asteroids and Missile Command. Those were the only ones I was trained on. It wasn't, it wasn't me. But uh, unlike those two guys, I went on to do something about it later, because it really matters to me to be part of this crowd. It goes to six times uh, bonus right away. First two boards, one time, second two boards, two times, and then it maxes out at six. The difficulty, though, can change and rotate throughout the game. And definitely, once you hit 100 boards, it goes into this cycle called double lines, or that's what we call double line boards, to where you actually have twice as many lines that are showing up during those rounds. But from what I've been told, that, that runs out um, from 100 to 120. And then the double lines go away and it goes back to regular lines. But the difficulty can go through sections. It can go through waves. And I've actually played at times where after the zero times board goes by, or after board 256 goes by, it seems like the game has restarted itself, but you do have the same score. It's just that the difficulty reset itself. Sorry? Without frying the game? Oh, without resetting it or hurting the game? Um, usually you have to go through three sets of uh, uh, zero times boards before it'll uh, reset, normally. Uh, so that means from the fourth, fifth, sixth, from then on, unless you're paying attention, it could end at any time after a zero times board. Uh, but usually you're set and you're safe for the. Uh, first two, let's say. The first two times the zero boards will come around. You can pretty much max out your points without worry of going over. Unless you got all the way to that point without losing any cities, then I guess you could. I can't. And uh, I am willing to share all any secrets, all tips, anything with any youngsters that decide that they want to beat my score or take on somebody else's score or Victor Ali's score in the future. I don't care. If they're good enough and they're showing... Uh, they're showing me something like they can do it. I'll share every secret I have. Wow, that's loud. Ah, hey, there's a good... Damn, I should have brought that up. Thank you. I wish I had made a list. Yes, um, now I, guess, uh, I guess most of you know that uh, there was a game called Super Missile Attack made by these guys who ripped it off from Atari, and they lost their lawsuit. And so, uh, one fact a lot of people don't know is that in that lawsuit, one of the things that came of it was this company who uh, made the Super Missile Attack and lost the lawsuit against Atari. To settle up, had to give them two games. One of them was Food Fight. So I don't know if you guys are a fan of Food Fight at all, but... And the other one's Quantum, thank you. Wow, very knowledgeable crowd we have here today. And uh, we wouldn't have Quantum or Food Fight without that. Now, I have a, a Missile Command, and as long as you have a, a Missile Command and you score the right ROM set, you can play Super Missile Attack on your Missile Command. And sure enough, I've done that. The game's insanely hard. 
it, uh, instead of ma uh, maxing out at six times bonus, it maxes out at ten times bonus, and it, it goes up one degree, uh, it goes up one times difficulty every board, not every two. It's insane. Uh, I do have a second uh, Missile Command cabinet at home, which I do plan on converting into that. And what I want in my own private collection is a Missile Command right next to a Super Missile Attack. I don't know how many people have got that in their private game rooms. I'm sure at least one or two. I can't hear. I'm sorry? No, no, that would have never been available in a real cabinet. Huh? No, Atari snagged up that right away with a lawsuit and, and got all that cut out. Uh, although, there is another uh, control panel overlay. It's a blue one that they came out with back then. I think it was going to be for the super missile attack. I was able to score one of those up, uh, new old stock or whatever. And it's just like so many other projects of mine sitting home waiting for the eventual day. I decided to you know, get that together. But I'll have the uh, new one on, on, on my original, and then the blue one on the Super Missile Attack. My wet dream is to have them right next to each other. You know. I can picture it. So this resurgence, uh, after watching this right now, I'm sure some of you get the feeling that you could probably do this yourself, right? No. Hey, how many people raise their hands when he said how many people have got a missile command? Oh, nice, two of us. Ah, oh, Gil's not in the room. Uh, usually I'm more animated and I get up and run around, but they explain to me about the microphone system here, so... I'm not so much glued to my seat, but if they want it recorded right, I am. I don't do MAME. I'm sorry, I don't do any MAME. I don't do console gaming, PC gaming. I don't even do modern day video gaming. I, I pretty much only do classic arcade gaming. And, and it's not because I got an attitude against the rest of it, but if you're going to be you know, enjoying it or have a decent you know, record at it, you really have to invest some time. And I, I barely invest enough time in it as it is. So. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of games. I have, uh, has anybody ever heard of cycle shooting? That's where you shoot pigs in leather off of motorcycles? No, probably because I'm the only member of VAPS that owns one. Uh, I have a lot of the regulars, Centipede, Asteroids, Missile Command, Mr. Do, Qbert, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat 2, Road Blaster, Stun Runner, uh, Asteroids Deluxe, which is down. I got a Golden T 2006, which is all 29 courses in one. I got a couple of touch screens. Um, Battle Zone, Night Stalker, Capcom Bowling. A matter of fact, a buddy of mine just got the world record on Capcom Bowling on my unit. His name's, his name's Scott Spencer, couldn't be here today. But uh, that's, my, that's my only big number one, is that I own a machine that a number one was placed on. So that's it for me, yes sir. It'll kick it off if you open the door. Unless they got the kickout switch turned off. Oh, it's kind of loud, but... Oh, you can. Can you uh, tell us what happened to Ross when he decided to uh, go against <laughs> Now, I'm sure most of you guys know the, the, the term Frenzy from the video game Frenzy, but there's also a non-video style game called Frenzy. Does anybody know this game at all? Anyone? No? I have one of those also. <laughs> what it is, it's, it's in a diamond shape pattern. There's 16 round plastic uh, playing pieces, let's say. These playing pieces light up in a set of two, somewhere on this diamond shape of 16. Two of them will light up. As fast as you can, you gotta hit those two. And then another two, and another two. So, for a year and a half, I have it in two pieces put in my spare garage. You know, I'm having Ken House and Ross, you know, having some serious gamers over. I decide, all right, man, it's been a long time. I'll bust this thing out. We'll see what happens. It becomes the most popular thing of the night in the entire game room, and it's not even video-based. Oh, I just wanted to put it back away. Um, I also have a pachinko. I don't know if you guys are into pachinko. It's from 1968 from Japan, all original. I love, you know, you flick it and the ball goes ding, ding, ding. 
I love it. It's so addictive, man. People come over and play it. They'll wear their arm out playing it. And I tell them, I say, it's not even video based. What are you doing? If you're going to hurt your wrist on something, go play pinball or video games. Uh, what did I say? Battlezone? Yeah. Uh, Galaga 88, which is the rare edition. Love it. I'm actually going to make an attempt on that in the next couple of years. I see. I see, uh, I see a new number, two or three or, or ten for Bill, uh, but um, Galaga 88 is great. There's a lot of secrets to it. I'm sure everybody here is a fan of Galaga, or you at least all know Galaga. This is uh, Galaga meets cartoon crackland, in my opinion. Secrets, everything. Uh, yes, I also got a Galaxian. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, a, that, that's one of my pride and joys. I'm, I'm surprised I forgot that. Yeah, Commando. Uh, Asteroids. Xevious. And uh, I, I know people like to make fun of these, but that Home Edition Williams 12-in-1. Sure enough, the 28 games I owned when I scored one of those from a buddy of mine that was, you know, down on his luck and needed the money, justifying why I bought it. Um, I didn't have any of those 12 games. So I don't care who makes fun of that. The crowd plays it when I have them over. No, uh, in, in one bar I have a pool table, in another bar I have the golden tee. Uh, and then in a third bar I have two touchscreens and uh, the Street Fighter 2. All the rest of everything else is split between the apartment and two different garages and my buddy's garage. A house is what was really needed, but that went on the back burner. I, I need a big house. I'm sorry? Sure, the majority of the time you want to use the side bases to get rid of shots that you're not going to have to be so pinpoint accurate about. You'll notice a lot of the times I try to save the center shots for um, the diamonds and for cleaning up, especially if it's a basement shot at the end. Like I said, it takes longer for the side shot to get there. So if you're going to be pulling off some last second saves in the basement, you have to be using the center. A lot during the beginning, definitely during the beginning, taking out lines. Uh, like I said, start out, go to one side, go to the left, go to the right. Hopefully the ship's coming out there, use your side shots. Try not to use your center shots until it's, until it's definitely needed. You'll get more accustomed, you'll get, you'll get more pin perfect with your center shooting than your side shooting. The side shooting will take a long time to develop pinpoint accuracy. Are we done with this? You guys enjoying this? Thank you. Uh, no. No, but I was hoping to finally make my first ever uh, attempt on a game in front of uh, uh, some officiators. I've always done everything on videotape because, you know, marathon, you can't really show up at this place Friday morning and hope to stay here till Sunday night if everything goes planned, you know. So I, I do that, uh, I used to do that in game rooms and make deals with game rooms and dealing with game rooms and uh, now I do it at home. It's not the location, it's the talent. But this will be the, uh, the first time here in, uh, at this location that I'm going to actually do something like maybe Galaga. I don't know if I'm going to go for, you know, number five of all time or number seven. No big deal to me. I would just like to be on that list. I'm sorry? Uh, I think at some point I will make an attempt on Qbert. A serious attempt. And I will be making an attempt on uh, Galaga 88. Those two, I, those two I feel really comfortable about in the future. Hopefully, you know, number three, number four, number ten, I don't care. Have anybody here been out to uh, New Hampshire ever? It's a fun spot. Anyone? Yeah, I'm jealous. So I was jealous that you guys have got number ones, and now I'm jealous of that also.
I didn't bring my skates today. I knew I'd be asked that, man. I always get asked that. Did you bring your skates? Usually one question I get at almost every Q&A after the film, like when, when the film first came out and we went around and did, uh, uh, you know, the meet and greet and we did the Q&A after the film, every single time I'm sitting there with an audience full of people that just got done watching the movie and they say, what did you do about going to the bathroom? I swear the bathroom question is asked at every single, you know, so you guys are the first crowd that hasn't brought that up, so that's good. Uh, one thing I can mention about, about that, keeping it, it, it clean for all the children that are here, is uh, if you were playing a game like Star Wars, you walk away from Star Wars, I don't care if you've got six shields remaining, 25 seconds later, that game's over. You're gonna go through shields, boom, it's done. Um, I'm sure with Asteroids Deluxe, you can only have 10 cities in, in storage. I mean, 10 ships in storage. You can't really walk away and go enjoy yourself having a number two and, and get everything taken care of for the next day when you only got 10 ships in storage. Same thing with uh, Centipede Millipede. That's insane. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Donald Hayes spent seven hours and 50 minutes playing Millipede. That game is so unbelievably fast, unbelievably hard. Now he can't walk away from Millipede? What does he do for seven hours and 50 minutes? With Missile Command with Asteroids, the two games that I do, I don't have that issue. You can get up to almost 256 ships or 256 cities, take off, have a cigarette, go potty, eat, whatever it is. So that, that's a difference there. Somebody's gonna play um, 54 hours like uh, Brandon Erickson did on Star Wars to get the new number two world record. He had friends hold up a blanket, bring in bucket. He's got to play. Now in between destroying the, um, in, in between destroying the, uh, the planet, the Death Star, and then starting off fighting TIE Fighters again is I think seven and a half or 12 and a half seconds, something like that. That's the only break he gets. So all of that has to go down, you know, during that time, right, it's crazy. So the potty question with me is really silly and, it, and, and it's not something we have to contend with. Now, those guys going after those other games we were talking about, and they've got something content to contend with. The, uh, the March 2008, after I figured out the, uh, the secret, or figured out an answer to get around it, was the longest game I ever finally got to play. It went 31 hours and 12 minutes. And it ended not because of the machine making a mistake. Uh, it, it was the first time I'd ever gotten that far, and I really didn't know how I'd, uh, you know, I like to believe that I'm a machine. But I had it proven to me in March of 08 that I'm not. And then I think February this year, I met the actual machine. His name's John McAllister. He's sitting right there. <laughs> you'll, you'll all see. You'll all see in the next year. To see what I saw that first night. Really, I don't see how we're ever going to get around there not being a documentary someday about Roy. And when that happens, I don't see how I can get out of being, not being in it. I'm sure. Yeah. It's bedazzling. So usually what I do is uh, get close to 810. Just before 810, start losing off the cities. That way I see that I have five or less before I hit 810. Usually I try to get down to just one city. What's really impressive is go over the 810, lose your last city. It looks like game's over. And then instead of, because it went over uh, eight, you know, a 10,000 mark, the game should start back up with one city. Just like it had been, you know, just one city every 10,000. But then all of a sudden it goes from one city to six full cities again because there's the 147 bonus cities in there for getting to 810,000. So you really don't need to get to a million to be a million player. You need to get to 810,000 to be a million player. You know what? 
I, I brought that along. Great question. Oh, this puppy right here has recorded history throughout the years, this one VCR. I set up a camcorder. I get some VHS tape. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I get the camcorder set up, set it up, make sure the tape's out of it, that way it won't shut off, and all these things you'll learn along the way. Run it over to uh, two VCRs. I actually have another one that I use also. Use eight hour long tapes, long before the first one's about to run out. St start up the second one, get 105% of everything. In uh, March of 08, they actually had me. They actually had me uh, send in a urinalysis after the attempt. It kept me at uh, it kept me in tenth place, but uh, the score was a lot better, so I was happy. Oh, I think this game's ending right here. It looks like I'm playing. Now, a lot of times you guys will probably see it saying the end because your score wasn't big enough to get on the screen. Oh, I haven't seen that in 15 years. <laughs> right. I brought these along to sign, although I know that half of this crowd's already got one of these. So I, I brought more than I needed. Has anyone else thought of uh, any other questions? Yeah, have you met any of the other uh, top 10 missile command players? No, I have not, and uh, that, that was the thing I was starting out uh, talking about earlier when I, when I got into this, is that it was explained to me by Walter that the nine guys above me on the marathon score for Missile Command were all grandfathered in before Twin Galaxies took over those scores. All nine of them. And many of them have admitted that when the reset condition would happen, as long as they took a quarter right then, they could add their two scores together. Or three or four. So what I'm competing against is not only equipment which is more than 25 years older than the age of the equipment when they did it, and I'm in my 40s, and of course they were in their teens and 20s when they did it, uh, so the equipment's older, I'm older, I'm under way more strict rules, everything's videotaped for mine, none of their nine was. I gave a year analysis for mine, none of those nine did. And what they believe is that before Twin Galaxies took over these nine scores is that it was run by Atari. So Twin Galaxies grandfathered these scores in from Atari. Well, back then in the early 80s, as the games were starting to die out, or even as they first came along, the one thing that game room wanted was free hype, free publicity. So for someone who's in charge or a manager or an assistant manager or someone to sign something saying, oh yeah, he got 31 million here. Well, that's what I'm competing against. So it's, it's much more difficult for me to end up getting you know, any, anywhere above the top nine score. Any, anywhere in that, that section, is, it's gonna be so much harder. Uh, I have to you know, get on tape, the board. None of, those guys had to, none of those nine guys had to get the board on tape. They didn't have to get anything on tape. So it's gonna be very difficult if I ever get number one, which you know, I can live without, that's no big deal. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have seen the Game Tap mini documentary, Missile Command, anybody seen that? The mini documentary GameTap did, it's five minutes long. Huh, bummer, I'm the star of it. Um, <laughs> while YouTubing, put in Missile Command, tapped in, T-A-P-P-E-D-I-N. Tapped in, Missile Command, it's great in YouTube. Uh, it doesn't just talk about me, of course, it uh, also talks about um, 
some of the resurgence, I guess, in classic gaming, but it really talks about Missile Command the most. So they talk about the, when it came out, the Cold War era, Reagan was a president, it came out in 1980, they got all kinds of footage. They even paid for footage from uh, the movie Terminator. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but, you know, what's her name, Sarah O'Connor, ha has the uh, dream where she sees the nuclear holocaust come along. They showed that in this clip. Then her son is in the game room playing Missile Command. Everybody remember that, the original term, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, Terminator, right. Um, or is that Terminator? Part two, yeah, T2, he's in there playing Missile Command. So they paid for the rights to be able to use these clips, they paid, they paid for this thing, I, I don't know what they paid for it. But uh, you know, no one ever gets to see it unless you go searching for it, I mean deep searching for it. I did three of them with them, I did uh, Virtual Fighter, I did Tetris, and I did Missile Command. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of uh, Peter Hirschberg, whatever his name is, that owns Luna City, that private game room. The other half of the, this five minute documentary also goes into his personal game room and shows you all around in it. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there besides the wickedly interesting William Carlton. So a whole, whole bunch of other things in there to look at. Has anybody else thought of any questions yet? No, rocking. These are great. Have you played Liberator? Only at California Extreme 2007. I'd never seen one. I saw a lot of games at California Extreme 2007 that I'd never seen before. Tried to play them all. Gallagher's Gallagher. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's a cool one. Three Stooges. Beavis and Butthead, I, I hadn't seen so many of those games. Boxing Bugs. Crazy. Was the Beavis and Butthead game, is that one where they're spitting off the roof on, onto the sidewalk that, on people? I, I don't remember it so much. I, I more remember that there was a game. And one thing I did is I had my girlfriend go around. I'd see a game, I'd, I'd get a picture of me with the game. I'd move right on to the next game. Love it. Oh, just being around those games, playing, playing those, those out-of-date games is great. Any other questions? Uh, uppers. They don't want any kind of uppers in my system. You know, of course, the nine guys before me, you know, whatever, but Bill can't do that. So uh, they said they, they, there's this uh, one test called the seven point test or something like that that deals just with uppers. Um, what we did is we couldn't find that, so we went to Rite Aid and we bought uh, a, 12, a 12 in one, where it was 12 different uh, uppers that they're looking for, and I, I turned in that urinalysis. And uh, you know, we were on the phone constantly, my girlfriend and Walter were on the phone constantly, because here I am doing the missile command attempt while she's on the phone right next to me talking to Walter the whole time about what do we have to do? And then what if, this, what if we get the record and it ends at 2 a.m.? We have to get a medical professional? How's he gonna go someplace and, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning? So eventually what we did is we got a store-bought one, we chatted with Walter, we told him what it was about, he approved it. Sure enough, before I cut off the videotape, the game ended. I, I go if the game ended, whatever, I've got my best score of my life. I tilt the camera down, and I showed them the cup and everything. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 oh yeah. I, I, I let them know that, you know, it, it, you could hear it filling up. And you packed. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, if I was cheating, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even submit it. I'll be a waste of money. So there's a lot of scrutiny and there's a lot of things that are facing me about uh, getting either one of these two scores. And really, I, I don't see myself, well, I don't really see anybody beating the world record on asteroids. Uh, I've been through it, I've done it. I, you know, at one time, I was able to turn off that Brassington kit. You'll notice with asteroids that there's five digits, 99,990. It's the best you can get. It takes me 12 and a half minutes. You add in two more digits, the first time took me 21 hours to go seven digits, which means 9,999,090. The second time I ever did that, it took me 19 and a half hours. So I was able to cut an hour and a half off my time. So you'd really have to be moving, you know, I'm a smoker, you know, and this was all during training, it wasn't serious, but still, 19 and a half hours to get to 10 million, and I need to go to 40 million. So what's 40 times 19, you know what I mean? That's what we're looking at. I don't see being able to do it unless whoever does do it is able to score more points per hour on average or per day than I'm able to do. You know, they gotta be, they gotta be rocking. And they also have to pay attention to not going over with the 256 ships. Now, what that will do to you, and it's been explained to me two different ways. Most people will say that it resets just like Missile Command. But I've also heard the theory that it does not reset like Missile Command. You get your 256 ship on asteroids and it zaps just what you have in reserve. Meaning, the ship you're playing with is your only ship. And you've now got 10,000 to go before you get one in storage. So at any moment, your game ends. So I don't know which way it goes. I've never done that with asteroids. 
you'll notice on asteroids at least one thing you've got going for you is that if you play player one and you get your extra ships lined up across the top of the screen, it shows you the first 59 that you have. So let's just round it at 60. Look over at the clock. How long did it take you to get these 60? If you maintain playing the same way and you don't want to go over 256, do the math, figure it out, know when to lose cities, take breaks, do, I mean, know when to lose ships, take breaks, whatever. Now, if I didn't need to take a break, if I didn't need to eat, if I didn't need to go to the bathroom, I could just hold down the thrust button, run into rocks, get rid of a bunch of ships while gaining some points. That's one way of doing it. But, you know, you, you really need to be a robot. One thing I found is that you got five guys who could all do this on asteroids. They could all do this on missile command. You set them up for a weekend to play. You know which one of those five is going to do it? The one that just spent the last three weeks on the treadmill. The one that's been eating right. The one that's got the proper diet. They're all great. They're all outstanding. So it comes down to more than just the game when you're going to do a marathon. You're, you really got to have your mind set. For the longest time, you know, I, would, I would just want to set up and do it until uh, Anthony Ramos, chief commander at ground control, talked me into coming into the game room, doing it two weeks before, playing overnight. They locked me in. One week before that weekend, because unfortunately I'm not a multimillionaire and I must work throughout the week, I'm sure like the rest of you. Once I do win the lotto, I'll have some more scores, I promise you, all right? But I gotta work. And, and I dig this marathon thing more than I dig just going after a tournament record. That's, that's just me. Uh, the third week though, it, 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 it barely beat me up. The first week, it would just about destroy me. It would kill me. I would sleep for 14 hours, and I would have to have someone drive me home from downtown. I had to have a chauffeur, let's say. The second week, once again, also torturous, but I, I, I would finally sleep eight hours, which to me is more than normal. That's great. But by the end of the third week, I, mean, I, I would just take to it so much better. So that's what it comes down to. You got 10 guys who can all do this. The one that's going to be able to do it is the one that's prepped for it, you know, physically, diet, all that stuff. Um, I guess you guys heard, what was it, two years ago, unfortunately, there's two uh, Korean gentlemen, uh, 131, one of them 32, stayed up playing over a day and a half in cyber cafes and both passed away. They both died. Okay, diet. What kind of food and drink is in a cyber cafe? It's stuff to kill you. Uh, not planning for it. Probably not spending any time on the treadmill. Things like this. That, that's what did these guys in. And I, I, I promised my honey that, that I would not go out that way. So it's a lot of training in it, you know, up front, which really is the only thing that gets me on a treadmill is preparing for one of these attempts. Mm -hmm. And there's usually two or three years between each one. Any other questions? Did I mention I'm the first player in history to have two on, on video tape? No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Any other questions? We're going to get to sign in this before I bore everyone. I hope somebody brought a black marker because uh, I didn't. I you, a silver paint you, the, you the man. Right on. Okay. Thank you. I brought enough of these around to to give everybody in here 17 each. <laughs> uh, we'll put them in the raffle. Oh. Sign them raffle. All right. Um, everybody did recognize the VCR? Yeah, everybody recognizes a VCR in here? Okay, all right, good. There's no youngsters in the room. Um, the other day, the reason I ask is the other day, a buddy of mine, we were working on this stereo system and we reached into this box and we pull out, you know, NLP. And his son says, well, that must be a really big CD. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so. Like the guy says in my movie, this one guy, uh, I, how many people here have seen High Score? OK, there's a scene in the movie where uh, we did this, and it, it was just ad lib, made up as we go. A guy happens to enter this game room where I had the missile commander dur during, a, tournament, or during a, a training session over the weekend. So this guy walks in, he's in there with his son, and he says, we were driving around down the street. We were actually going down around the corner. But as we drove by, I looked over and I swear I saw the side art to a missile command. He said, I couldn't believe it. There's no way there'd be one in this game room in the front window. But then we park and we don't go to the other store. We come down here right away. My son wanted to go look at the console games. He said, I can't believe there's a missile command here. I said, well, we're also filming. Boom, we turn on the camera. Me and the guy played doubles in the film. None of that was planned. None of it was scripted. But it was the things that guy said. Which is, which is why we left him in the film. It's one of the best scenes in the movie. I, I think it's one of the greatest scenes in the movie. The guy's talking about when he was a kid, paper out every quarter he could scrape up, and he, and he says, you know, it was asteroids and space invaders and missile command, you know, the good ones. 
And, and, and the guy saying it like that is like, yeah, this guy's a true fan. And, you know, of course, he's in his 40s. So, you know, you understand that. He's, he said he'd look at this when he was a youngster and be like, wow, this is, this is state of the art. This is unbelievable. He goes, now I look at it with my kid. He's like, it's a dinosaur. You know, it's, it's, it's old school. It's nothing. Uh, and the guy is happy that it's the one game that he can beat his son in. So, hey, whatever video games, you know, do for you in a positive nature, and that's fine. Are there any last questions before we get started? I mean, before we get finished. <laughs> All right, I'll be uh, signing some of these here. If there's not any more questions, you guys can applaud as I stand up now. BC.